I have a feeling at the time that George Cooper, one of the one of the owners of the mine, that the uh, he was he, he was actually a contract miner, uh, and like I say, uh, Eric Holzheim was acted as a deputy. Oh, well, he, he and, was an owner, was he? Uh, Holzheimer. Holzheimer, yeah, he was one of the tripartite owners. Who was the third? Uh, Les Thompson. The winch would winch the, the um, yep. I think there were only about four wagons. Uh, they were pulled to the service. The uh, one uh, worker would just un unhook them and then use the same rope to lower them down to what a bin that would have, uh, would have only held three or four wagons of coal. The job that I did there was just to <laughs> meter the coal out of the uh, out of the bin onto a conveyor belt, a very slow moving conveyor belt, where two personnel would just pick the stone out of the uh, coal, just into another wagon. That, when that wagon was full of stone, they'd just wheel it out and just tip tip it down over the side. Well, the coal just moved ahead over over the uh, hopper that was uh, on the river, fairly tall, out uh, 50 feet, 60 feet out, uh, standing above the water level. The great innovation uh, they put into place when I was there was um, the engine driver was a welder and they bought just one piece of plate, uh, two inch round holes in it. It was tipped into a, like a trough and then they had a piece of conveyor chain and the conveyor chain just moved the, moved the coal along and as the conveyor, that last length of conveyor chain moved the coal along over that trough, uh, it, was more, it was actually acted like a sieve. And then the bigger pieces then just fell into the crusher. And when I was there, they just had a jaw crusher, yeah. just a just a single action yeah. jaw crusher. And then of course the mine, then the coal was transported down the river by one of one of I think there was actually three barges operating when I was there. There was one self-propelled. It was uh, uh, a hopper, just like a small coastal barge. And then the other two, they just had they had actually uh, tugs lashed yeah. to the side of them. I forget the names of them. I think I think one was definitely called Brammer. I think the Brammer was the self-propelled that I sometimes go down onto the deck and into and then the, uh, the people that worked the barges. They were very proud of their uh, marine heritage and they were very strong. And uh, most of them had some of them even those had, had tattoos. And there was even a skipper aboard, of course. And and they all towed the line when he, you know, when he uh, called the tune. Even down inside, uh, I, could, I could see on very really hot summer days, down inside the uh, living quarters was, was air conditioned, even in, on, the, on, the, on that one. And then to load the coal, all, all they would do, they had a, a, man, uh, a, a manually operated winch, would lower, lower the, uh, the chute down, and then they just had a sliding door. Yep. Where they just would... I suggested to me at the time that uh, I, I thought, I think I heard later on that it was correct that the uh, Mogul, from that scene they were working there, was had one of the highest calorific values. Of, and so even only 300 tonne a week, they blended it, uh, lift the, um, the calorific value of the, the fuel that was burned in the power station. So it was warranted, I suppose, the uh, small amount that used to go down the river every day. So, But uh, certainly it wasn't, it wasn't highly mechanised compared with uh, when I worked at the West Farland College. And uh, so, no, it was all just, when I was there, it was just all um, contract miners. So I was only down there about one yeah. day. And it was very frightening for me anyway, how people worked in that, those conditions. Uh, but they tell me the, the conditions were very similar to Rose's mines, because the, the seams at Rose was very thin as, as well, thin seams. Because mm -hmm. when I worked at West Farland Colliery at Dinmore, it was no less than 10 to 14 feet high. Uh, yeah, it was, and they worked machinery there. In 1958, there would have been no more than 20, 20 miners. Probably half came from around the district and, and half from uh, outside, from across the, to, towards the district, across the river. It was, when I was there, it was commonly known as the United Nations Colliery because of the ethnicity of all the workers. A few of the miners actually came from Rosewood, no doubt in... 1958, say, after the Second World War, Polish, a couple of Poles, Yugoslav, German, and there was actually uh, one miner, the local miner, his name was Hubert Edgerly. And the name, like I say, there's other names, uh, Mackay, uh, he was there, a, a miner called Barney Mackay, and the chap of Hanley, who died later on at uh, Southern Cross Colliery in the fall. 
have a different locals.